Welcome to part two of this introduction to INICnet. Part one gave a high-level overview of INICnet technology. In part two, we will get into the details of synchronizing information and how various data channels work in INICnet. A simple network management stack is introduced through Microchip's unified centralized network stack called Unisense. INICnet is a synchronous network where common clock is distributed between the nodes of a system. In addition, the network is capable of tunneling other clocks, which can be useful in applications such as driver assist, where operating cameras from a common clock is beneficial. The clock synchronization of all devices in the network is accomplished as follows. A dedicated timing master device sends out network data in continuous data frames at a rate of 48 kilohertz, which is identical to the audio sampling rate. The result is a continuous bitstream running through the network providing a stable clock signal for the entire network. Only one timing master must be active in the network at a time. All other devices in the network are called timing slaves. They synchronize to the network clock that is set by the frame rate of the timing master. Synchronization in a common audio sample rate clock and multiples thereof greatly simplify networked audio applications. Four types of data are typically used in today's automotive infotainment applications. Control data, consisting of commands and status messages used to control a distributed infotainment system. Synchronous data, such as digital PCM coded audio streams from microphones, which are transferred with ultra low latency to audio processing applications, so-called acoustic boxes, and also music streams going from a source, like a head unit, to one or more syncs, like audio amplifiers. Packetized data, as used in client-server style communication for the transfer of files and information, and also for any Ethernet and TCP IP based communication. Packetized data is typically used by instrument clusters, head units, and e-call units. Isochronous data is streaming data that is not synchronized to the network. Isochronous data streams typically have variable bandwidth needs, such as compressed video streams coming from a TV tuner, a head unit, or any video source. A key advantage of INICnet technology is its ability to support all of these data types. On this slide, you can see some of the basic properties of data transport in the INICnet. The network frames provide the time base for the entire network, constituting an uninterrupted stream of frames and bits from which the frame clock and bit clock are derived. Each frame travels around the entire network, cyclically transporting data to and from all devices. All network frames have the same structure, starting with some administrative bytes and the control channel, shown in blue, followed by the packet channel, in red, and the streaming data area, in green. All devices on the network share the control channel, but since only one device can send a message at a time, all messages are transmitted sequentially. The control channel transports a single control message split up into quadlets, which are chunks of four bytes across several consecutive frames. Similarly, devices which use packet data transmission share the packet channel. An Ethernet data frame, EDF, has up to around 1,500 bytes and might be spread across many network frames. However, the individual chunks are typically much bigger than on the control channel, resulting in a much higher bandwidth compared to the control channel. The bytes in the streaming data area of the network frame can be assigned individually or in blocks to a specific application, thus building up a logical channel. Streaming data is transported in several time division multiplex streams, providing reserved bandwidth for each audio and video source which is associated to a stream. In summary, a random network frame typically transports data originating from several different sources and targeting several different devices. The control channel supports communication, represented by the blue arrows between all nodes in an INIC net. This is the basis for communication as well as for network administration. Control messages are also used for remote control of an INIC in a remote device, which may not have an external host controller with application code. The bandwidth of the control channel is fixed to four bytes of the frame and is shared by all devices in the network. It looks as if the head unit always initiates message traffic, but this is not necessarily the case. For example, if the user wants to switch to another movie, the rear seat display device could directly send a message to inform the head unit. This slide describes the basic features and mechanisms of the control channel. An arbitration mechanism grants fair access to the control channel to all devices. 
Once a device has gained access to the network, it can send one complete control message without being interrupted by another device. The sender has a complete control message in its sending buffer. It is split up into quadlets and transported to the control channel of several consecutive network frames. The bandwidth of the control channel has a fixed size of 4 bytes per network frame, resulting in approximately 1.5 megabits per second, corresponding to up to 8,000 messages per second on the network. When looking at a particular device, however, the external host controller's ability to process messages limits the message throughput of this particular device to the order of about 500 to 1500 messages per second, depending on the interfaces. Transmission of control messages is CRC protected and guaranteed message delivery is assured by low level retries. The INICnet control channel provides dedicated bandwidth for control communication in the network. The packet channel is used for data exchanges, which need more bandwidth than is available on the control channel. Typical examples include any Ethernet frame IP data, TV channel lists, album art or graphic images, emails, web pages, phone book directories, map data for navigation, and software downloads. The size of the packet channel, or the number of bytes per frame which are reserved for packet data, is typically configured at the system startup and can be up to 116 bytes per frame in an INICnet technology 50 UTP or even up to 372 bytes per frame in networks having 150 megabits per second, offering more than 100 megabits per second of bandwidth for packet data transmission. Similar to the control channel, the available bandwidth on the packet channel has to be shared by all devices on the network who want to send packet data at a particular point in time. This slide shows the general mechanism for sending packet data across the network. Transmission control protocol is typically used to send Ethernet frames, usually combined with Internet protocol, or trivial file transfer protocol over UDP. Data integrity is provided by these higher software layers. The packet channel of INICnet just transports the packets regardless of the format. When it wants to send packet data, the sender node first establishes a connection to the receiver device using several specific command packets as defined by TCP, TF, TP, etc. Then the sender wraps the Ethernet frame coming from its application into an Ethernet data frame, placing it in its outgoing buffer. The sender cuts the EDF into several segments which fit exactly into the packet channel's size on the network. The sending node then has to wait for access until the packet channel is idle. Access permission travels in a round-robin-like method around the network. Once a device has gained access to the packet channel, it can send one complete EDF using several consecutive network frames without being interrupted by another device until the whole EDF is delivered. If there are additional packets to be sent, the sender has to wait again for access to the packet channel before its application can send the subsequent packets over TCP, TFTP, or others. INICs act as a distributed network that comes up independently of the applications that are connected to it. The network starts up very quickly, without intervention from any host controllers, and is available to transmit information. As host controllers boot up, they can register their functions on the network and begin to use the network to communicate with other network participants. INICnet is used to efficiently stream continuously flowing data, such as audio and video, to various devices in the network. Control information is also sent to all devices that participate in the network. INICnet multiplexes many different data types, such as audio, video, data packets, and control, over a single cable and can carry Ethernet frames unmodified to more easily interface with other vehicle subsystems. Ethernet provides a switched architecture used to communicate between different devices using IP or other mechanisms. Devices such as antenna modules, instrument panel clusters, and others can connect with each other and other subsystems using Ethernet. Ethernet frames can easily move either over the Ethernet or INICnet using a simple bridge. Combining INICnet and Ethernet has the following advantages. Audio and video applications profit from very simple, proven, and efficient bandwidth reservation for any stream data source in INICnet. Very low and deterministic latency for audio streams in INICnet. No AVB stacks or hardware needed in INICnet. Any standard Ethernet domain in the car can be seamlessly connected to the packet channel of INICnet, 
which simply tunnels the unaltered Ethernet frames to and from the INIC net. Unisense is a new technology that separates application development and network management by defining a standardized abstraction layer between low-level, hardware-specific software and applications. That is, application engineers can fully concentrate on their applications without knowing anything about the underlying physical layer. Network configuration can be done in a simplified way within record time. Unisense on the root node performs node discovery, remote node configuration and control, bandwidth allocation for AV streams, and AV connection management. Unisense is driven by a simple configuration structure called System Descriptor. Unisense is available free of charge as a ready-made Linux app on GitHub, and also as C and C++ source code. It only needs to be deployed in the central root node. The other nodes in the network are called remote nodes, and are all controlled by the central root node, thus do not have any network management functions. They are either slim nodes without a microcontroller and software, such as small microphones in an advanced audio system, or smart nodes, which have their own microcontroller to run customer applications, such as video displays, gateway devices, and others. The remote nodes and their applications are remotely controlled. For example, by tunneling I2C commands from the root node, they can simply take advantage of the bandwidth reservation and connection management for all AV streams, which has been done by Unisense in a standardized and reliable manner. Looking at the application communication between smart nodes themselves, or between smart nodes and the root node, customers can implement their communication either based on the TCP IP or in an F-block oriented way, or implement any customer specific protocol. When designing a network, it is necessary to configure the various channels that will be used by the network participants. The MPLAB network creator that Microchip provides makes this a simple task, and it is also a powerful Unisense editor. It has graphic and source code modes and provides the details of each connection along with the necessary documentation. It allows for a terminal and FTP connection to the target devices. Design rules provide for advanced validation of the system descriptor. The graphical mode provides an intuitive visualization of the system configuration. A special use of INICnet is presented in an e-call system, where operation of the network is critical for emergency calls. The root node delivers powers to the remaining network devices and starts up the network which is still partly functional. An alive mechanism is used to detect the network configuration during runtime. In this case, the last microphone before the network defect becomes the timing master. In an emergency call, the driver's voice is streamed from one of the microphones back to the root node, which passes the information to the e-call service via phone connection. Answers from the e-call service come in via phone and can be heard through the amplifier in the root node. In summary, INICnet technology transports audio, video, control, and IP data over a single physical channel. It is scalable with up to 20 nodes providing either 50 megabits per second over unshielded twisted pair cables in a ring or daisy chain, or 150 megabits per second over coaxial cable in a ring, point-to-point, -point, or daisy chain connection. INICnet technology provides automotive-grade, seamless tunneling of Ethernet packets between INICnet and Ethernet. It has very high bandwidth efficiency, allowing for 29 stereo channels with INICnet 50 UTP or 93 stereo channels with INICnet 150 coax. Open source software is available for drivers used in a variety of operating systems. Microchip's Unison software stack provides simplified network management. Microchip also offers a comprehensive toolchain to speed up the design and development process. INICnet technology is already part of an international open standard that is expected to be published as ISO 21806 in 2021. A product portfolio has been created with several chips targeted for specific use cases. Product briefs, application notes, and INICnet tool information is available on the website. More information is available on request through INICnet at microchip.com. Thank you for watching this INICnet introduction. Enjoy this short quiz. For more information on our INICnet technology, please visit microchip.com slash INICnet.